Hey guys, this is Dale from Prime Circle and you're watching Joe Today. Nuts and Bolts is a book about hope, with real stories of individuals and companies making a difference in the tech space. I speak to the author, McLean Sibanda. My journey of uh, going around and talking about innovation and intellectual property, people uh, were amazed uh, at the stories that I was telling them of entrepreneurs, but also at some of the things that we had done at the Innovation Hub. Uh, and it dawned on me that we do not tell enough of our own stories as Africans, uh, particularly stories of innovation and startups and entrepreneurship. And therefore, I started writing uh, to make sure that we can get the word out, but also some of the things that we've done uh, here can be scaled up uh, in other situations. Uh, and so that's how Nuts and Bolts uh, was uh, born, uh, so that one can be able to tighten uh, where there's things in place, uh, take off uh, the, the nuts uh, from the bolts, uh, and uh, make innovation work uh, for Africa. Who needs to take a page out of your book? So the book is written uh, for a number of readers. It's written for the entrepreneur. Um, there are stories uh, here of other entrepreneurs and therefore there's relatability. Uh, there's also uh, lessons uh, in terms of how these innovation hubs uh, and incubators actually operate. Uh, and therefore it makes it much easier for the entrepreneur to be prepared as they go out into, into the market. Secondly, the book is written uh, for innovation ecosystem builders and policy makers uh, so that they understand what is required to establish an innovation hub, to establish an, an accelerator, an incubator. Uh, but also, more importantly, what is required uh, to support entrepreneurs because we have to go beyond just the policies. You have to provide the funding, you have to provide mechanisms for those innovations to be scaled up. And I think lastly, the book is written for leaders. I start off uh, in the book talking about uh, this transition that I had to make. I made a transition myself, but I inherited an, or an organization in essence that needed to pivot. Uh, and uh, in transforming an organization, uh, leaders face challenges. And I talk about some of those challenges uh, in the book uh, and also some of the lessons uh, because it's quite important uh, as you lead that you understand the people that you're leading, but also to avoid some of the mistakes that are made. And in the book I talk about some of those mistakes where in essence I was more focused on results uh, and at times I forgot about the people, that there is, there are people that have to implement these uh, and, um, and these are mothers, fathers, someone's sons and so forth. Now I'm glad you touched on the issue of support. So my question to you is, is the public sector geared towards retaining intellectual property and taking that in, uh, intellectual property and pushing it forward for the entrepreneur? Mm. So what we've seen in South Africa since 1994 uh, are changes in respect of how we work with intellectual property. 1996, the R&D strategy introduced um, mechanisms, uh, in essence, that led to a strategy uh, in 2006 and then a law that I was privileged to be part of uh, drafting in 2008 and that is the Intellectual Property Rights from Publicly Financed Research and Development uh, Act. So in as far as uh, publicly financed uh, uh, research and innovation is concerned, I believe that there's great strides that have been made, particularly in terms of supporting the, protect, the identification, protection, and commercialization. So universities uh, today and research institutions are in a better place uh, in that particular regard. Where, however, we have failed is how we then take those innovations and put them into the marketplace in South Africa 
for government to use, whether it be in the healthcare sector or whether it be in, in solving water and sanitation challenges, there is a challenge there. And the problem really is around procurement. Uh, we've seen many innovations uh, that uh, struggle to make it into the marketplace uh, in South Africa, but find a marketplace elsewhere. And therefore, I believe that we need to relook and rethink our procurement, the Public Finance Management Act. How do we perhaps develop an approach where government can have preferential uh, procurement for innovations that government has invested in? Uh, you look all over the world, uh, even the COVID uh, vaccines, there's been a hand in terms of how government has actually funded the development uh, of those vaccines, the R&D that led to the IP. Now, should government fund or should government stay away from funding? Government has got a role to fund, um, particularly the risky uh, stages of development. So the R&D where there is basic curios curiosity uh, research, uh, government has got a role. Uh, but also in a place where the technology has not been proven or is looking for markets uh, before the venture capitalists uh, can come on board, there's a role for government to fund there. But once the market failure has been addressed, government should stay away and private sector needs to take that uh, through to the market.